Hey, my loves. Welcome back to our channel. We know it's been a minute. No motherfucking judgment, okay? I'm Zar. This is my beautiful husband, Joe. Um, we're here talking about ready to love. That's number one. Number two, um, make sure that you guys subscribe to this channel. We're going to have more content about more things, talking mess about all things love and light and family and growth. And we just want to get into it with Ready to Love. We were behind one and this was the episode where they went out. The men took the ladies out with their exes. But y'all know if y'all if y'all have watched uh, mm. with us before, y'all know I hate these episodes. Like I love them. I think they're so stupid. And such a waste of time. And here we go again, where people is being, you know, uncomfortable and catty and bitchy and weird. And the whole thing is just like. Now, we've been drinking and eating crabs and stuff. So we just about to shoot the shit off the top of our head to talk shit about this shit. We did have crabs and crabs was good. They was good. Yeah. They was good. Where did we go? Somebody know. shrimp. Some it was a, something good. with a shrimp on it. But the shrimp holy look, shrimp. Holy shrimp. Okay. It wasn't too bad though. It wasn't too bad. Yeah. So let's get into this. So I don't remember who goes first. I feel like it's Cornelius. I really want to address the elephant in the room. And by the elephant, I mean the picture of this grown ass man in his dining room. Chest naked. With his shirt off painted. He was chest naked in the painting, right? Chest naked. He was in the painting with his chest out with paint on him. Yeah, it was weird. Every part of it was very weird. It was giving he shows love on the spectrum. If y'all picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So and not the Netflix show. And not the Netflix show, which is a fantastic which is show. A beautiful and y'all should watch it's a beautiful it show. It is. Talk about ready to love. That that's a group of people who really ready to love. They are. They should be on this show. They should be on the motherfucking yeah. show. <laughs> but because no. I am really like uh I'm really disappointed in this DC cast. Cause I feel like DC so has much better to offer. And no no shots at the cast or anybody personally. Um, I just feel like DC has better uh, prospects than what we're seeing. I think, <laughs> you know, I think because we were in DC, I was under the expectation that it would be a lot more, I don't know, classier is yes. the word. Well-mannered, uh, classier, Right. Uh, uh, much more ready to love, so to speak. Yes. Much more ready to date. Um, I feel like we talked about this in the in the other video. I feel like there's a lot of people uh, just swimming and sinking. Like there's a lot of people who are doing things. They need a lot of expert help. They're doing things that you're like, why would you ever do that on a date? Why would you ever do that to an individual who you just met two weeks ago? Yeah. Um, and I feel like there are a lot a lot more. Um, eligible bachelor and bachelorettes yeah. in DC than what we are seeing. I think that's true, uh, a thousand percent, and especially because we watched other seasons. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like we actually felt people growing a connection. This does not what that feels like to me. This feels like speed dating. Every episode feels like a new episode of speed dating. And I also feel like when I think about uh, DC, I had higher expectations because DC is a little bit of they talk about like Atlanta being yeah. like a, 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 a an unofficial Wakanda. DC is really an unofficial Wakanda. It was probably the and, first and, one, and and it is yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And, and I think that um, I'm I'm just disappointed in the batch of people that we got, and I just feel like um, there is a lot more quality of person in D.C. than what we're seeing on this cast. Yes. Okay. So, let's talk about it. So, Cornelius opens up. Cornelius is with his fiance. And Camille comes. And... With his fiance? Ooh, child. Oh, she gave... <laughs> Y'all, I've been drinking. I've been drinking. <laughs> I see. Listen! My baby. Who am I even talking about? 
Not nobody Ooh, fiance. Child. I think they were ex fiance. Did he say that? Yo, yeah, I didn't take I don't no remember notes. remember that. I, I didn't take any notes because I just really wanted to give y'all my honest feelings and opinions, which is probably a bad idea because I've been drinking. <laughs> but Cornelius meets up with his ex and Camille, okay? Camille is... Yeah, only Camille um got 10,000 ex-fiancés. Nobody else on here. Yeah, true. It is very scary. It's <laughs> very scary. I worry for Cornelius, but let me say this. This is what I don't like about him, and I don't care what none of y'all say, and as we progress, my feelings, like, and we start to talk about the newest episode that came out, you'll see why. I think Cornelius, like, I don't like to call men, like, uh, simps or anything like that. <laughs> I don't like to do that, right? But I do think something about him is underdeveloped. I am of the belief, now go with me, I am of the belief that Cornelius has never been with a good-looking woman. Oh, that sounded bad. Oh, that's not what I meant. Well, what I'm saying is he has never been in a position where a woman is choosing him and she may be relatively out of his league. And it, but it's okay, it's to, say okay it to say it's okay to say if we can lean into that idea maybe there's something to that where people have an experience a type of person of a certain caliber. And you can tell when they are in these spaces and it is foreign to them. Yeah. So that's okay to say because I think that's a real thing. Like I think you see that with, um, you see that with just, let's take a random example, right? Uh, young athletes that they might come from the the you high school. Sports and, well, it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> they, they might come from high school and now they're, they, 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 they're jumped into the pros and now they're around all of these beautiful women that are throwing themselves yeah. at them. You see how they, and when you around them, you're like, you're acting like a nut. And it's why. You you go, you're acting like a nut because you're a fish out of water. You've never seen a beautiful girl smile on your face before. Yeah. And now you're being weird. And I think there's something to that. And it's okay to say, like, maybe that's him. But I think, you know what I mean? I think it's something to, I think you're right. And I think that sometimes people go through life doing the choosing, Right. Like, I choose you, I pick this person, whatever. But it is a different feeling, and you guys let me know if you've ever experienced that. Let us know this. When you choose somebody, or when you feel like somebody chose you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like there was a time in even our relationship where I was choosing Joe, but I feel like in our new iteration of this relationship, Joe chose me. You know what I mean? And then it was like, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And not in a bad way. I yeah, mean, yeah, in like in a good way. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it changed kind of the dynamic almost. And not like a power shift, but more like a, um, you have a different feeling, like a feeling and a sense of security when somebody chooses you versus the other way around. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm saying all that to say, and I'm about to be real candid, and I really don't want Cornelius to be offended by this. But to me, that makes him bitch made. <laughs> okay? like, and I mean that with all due respect. I see this woman, you sit up in this woman's face, and I think it's okay to allow women to be clear and allow women to be strong. I think all of that is amazing. But he does not say anything at all. She will be like, oh, we about to move in with each other, buy a house, do this and do that. And he just like, but wait a minute. <laughs> But there is a population of dudes who gravitate towards Camille because of her level of craziness. And her big old booty. And, and that part, right? You know there what is I mean? a, what, what did the guy say? If y'all haven't seen the Crazy Hot Scale video, YouTube it, you're welcome. It's hilarious. It's also very accurate, but it's hilarious. But that's it's crazy. Hot Scale. Why am I just hearing about this? Oh my God! Have you not seen the video? I've never seen it. Oh, video. we watching the video. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Okay. Anyway, go watch the video. YouTube the crazy hot scale video. We can put the, it in the video. You YouTube it and figure it out. It's good. But the point is that I think <laughs> the video is hilarious. <laughs> I just thought about a part of it. Sorry. Um, but the point is that. Um, I can if 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 we took a poll of Camille's exes, I they were madly would, in love. I would bet 
that a lot of them were like him. I would bet a lot of them were like him. I bet I would bet that this is the type of man that she attracts. She dominates them. She she hovers over them. She swallows them up. I think about this TV show that we was watching and I stopped watching it because the girl was having sex with this guy and the guy was sucked up into her vaginal. Oh, uh, American and said, Gods. And I said, this is too Fantastic much for me. Fantastic show. That's Camille to me. <laughs> That's Camille. You know what I mean? And, and let me tell you something. I actually love that kind of energy. I think that you should be strong and, 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 and clear and assertive. I just find Camille to be obnoxious. <laughs> and what? You wasn't ready for that, were you? I find her to be obnoxious and I and I, and 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 scary, but not She's in a scary. way like. But some dudes handsome. like that shit, bro. We got a friend that I was just talking about when we was watching this show. He, I think he breaks up with women because they aren't scary <laughs> enough. But the way I was thinking really hard about who he's talking. Because I said his name on the he show. Did, he did, he did. I think he breaks up with women because they're not scary enough. There's a there's a population of men who they need it very toxically so when they get I, I, I hope that when they get older it's a maturity thing because when you mature you realize that's not cute right yeah. this is a very toxic trait but, women like but, Camille are scary but I think toxic. for that particular person it's a self esteem thing because knowing that him we too. grew up with him and oh I don't want to tell to me I know I know Lily <laughs> next <laughs> But like I, you know, I think that just knowing, knowing him the way that we know him, I think it's an insecurity thing more than. And I think it's now, a he's, that, of now he's that guy. So now it's like, oh well. But it's just a lot of dudes out here who, who, who do who, who gravitate towards this, and they they like they, <sighs> they yes. The point I'm trying to make is that Camille is not ready for love. Camille, you are not. Camille ready for love. is they Camille. Let her go. I think. Camille is a hunter. I have, we had our brother, Lynn. Me and him had this conversation. Because I think I'm a hunter too. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I have that kind of like clarity with people. Like, you know what I mean? So that's why I respect her. Like, I, I, I really do get that. Like, you in my space, it's either this or that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm single or I'm married. And I'm going to move like that. And, but a part of me also enjoys being a predator. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it's my truth, right? Like, so part of me likes to imprint on people and see how far that goes. It's something I'm working on in therapy. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a thing. And I think that that's something that she does. And that's also why I think nothing goes the full distance with her. Because the moment that she's like, oh, I got him, it's not fun no more. Maybe that's sense? why she was engaged three times. I, and, and not married. Like, because yeah. I told Joe, I said, I don't think it's a red flag that she was engaged three times. But then he said, it's not a red flag if she was married. Yeah, it's a red flag that she was engaged three times. Yeah, which which kind of does make sense. Yeah. She, it, Camille comes with a lot of red flags, though. I that's mean, one of them. first of all, that red flag meme came out right on time. It didn't? sure did. <laughs> Because it should just be Camille. Red flag, red flag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, really. nothing else. Just, it. Is her name Camille? Red flag, red flag, yeah. red flag. So let's move on. Um, it's so many <laughs> weird moments in this episode. A lot of them. Oh, my God. So Walter, first of all, y'all, are we even going to address Walter's ex? Can we have a moment of silence for her and her nails? Well, let, then let's, and I'm, we're going to backtrack a little bit. Go ahead, backtrack. Because a couple videos ago or maybe even the last video i we talked about we have a friend who knows walter personally. oh stop talking about please. i am because this is the insight that we and we're gonna give y'all the transparent insight whenever we that's what that's what we are about right so we're gonna be transparent about it we have a friend who knows walter personally and he tried to tell us before the show even aired the show wasn't even out yet he tried to tell us, yeah, Walter is a little bit of a fuck boy. Walter is a little bit on a like on the wild side. I'm surprised that he's doing this show. When we see Walter on the show, we like this can't be the person that our boy was talking about. This can't be. He 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 came 
He's very composed. He came with the shiny bald head and the nice beard. That's why with he the low me. spoken voice and everything <laughs> like that. And 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 I love Walter and, and, it was, <laughs> and it was like, oh, this can't be him. And then you see his ex. Somebody's ex is it can be very revealing about them. And you see Walter's ex, and it one thousand percent validated everything that our friend tried to tell us about Walter and the representative that he's trying to have be presented for uh, him on the show. I see where you're going. Yes. Okay. The real Walter oh. is Keisha or whatever her name was that was that was agitated. She was a nice woman though. Oh, whatever. She um, really was a nice woman. I thought that she was really, really open to the process and everything like that. And I don't think that they gave her the respect that she deserved. And I primarily think this, and I don't care what y'all say, but I'm going to say it anyway. They did not give her the respect that they deserve because they saw her and thought, ain't no competition here. Of course. It's not. But <laughs> don't say that. I'm sorry. But no, I think that, and I think that's what they thought. And I think that, I think it's, it, imagine being the ex that's called to be on the show to talk about your ex. That's Would why you this, have something this nice is to say? dumb. This that's why this is dumb. But we talking about it because we have. To. I mean, I know all my exes probably hate me, but I would I would have something nice to say about. I only have two exes. So my thing I is would, this. I have something nice to say. About my my thing is this. I don't I don't and 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 I can't remember the young lady's name, but she alluded to this after she went on the date uh, on the, on this episode where she met somebody's ex. This dynamic that I'm supposed to talk to you, like you add you shooting me these questions, whether they be hard or intimate or personal questions, mm -hmm. like you somebody's mama is weird because you're somebody's ex. So I don't need I don't need to be making a good impression on you because you shouldn't be in there. If if what me and so and so got going is good, you are irrelevant. You should never be in their life again. So I So why do I'm sitting in front that. of you answering your questions about our sex life? And what my biggest flaw, like just, it's just dumb. But I understand they do it because it's think, drama. It's TV drama. But let me, now hear me out about this one. I think it wasn't supposed to be that way. I think it was supposed to be them. Because if I, if I think about how I would go into moments like that, and you tell me what you think. I'm going in wanting knowledge. Because I ask him all the time about, like, how was it when you weren't dating me? Or how was it when, you know what I mean? Because I am one of those people, like, I'm curious. And I think, because I'm curious about your life and the experiences that you've had. So, to me, the way that the young lady that we both like, the cute girl, mm -hmm. walked into it and had questions, that's how I would go into it. You wouldn't have to ask me no other fucking questions, bitch. It ain't about me. I'm trying to figure out who this human being is. Him, the human being being him, and this experience and, and how is he? And it might not sway that, me either way, but I do because it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Because like, we also talk about how one person in one relationship is a completely different person in and, another and relationship. And that's a huge, a so, huge point. But I do think that it's something too, just wanting to know somebody on a deeper level and how other people see them. You know, but, that's, I mean? but again, that's not the dynamic here. I'm being interviewed by somebody's ex. But that's I'm not, not showing up to that party ever. And, and and that I didn't like. But when the young lady, Walter's ex, was talking to Sabrina and said, well, is there anything you want to ask me? Like, you know what I mean? To get to know him more because he is going to show his representative. It's hard not to. You understand what I'm saying? She was all like, is there anything that my I need to... Like, she got a little too with the neck and the nail and the hands... And I just was oh, like, she is, yeah. this is over the top. If you're, paying, first of all, and I'm going to tell you why it's over the top. In, in, for all intents and purposes, if we're in real life, this would never happen, right? But just stupid ass signed up for a show where you would date a hundred motherfuckers at right. one time, right? right? So now this is par for the courts. Am I wrong? Yeah. So now you will get into a situation like this and it's like be all like that would be weird to me. Like you didn't even have to give her all that energy. I thought that was completely misplaced. If they decided that they are exes at this point, the communication is open if she's sitting at the table, unless she the other boy ex. What's his name? Naim. Naim. Is it Naim? Yeah, Naim. I think it's, I think she pronounced it not M. His mama called him Naim. Naim. Mama, <laughs> mama called him Naim. Mama, yeah. go, mama gonna play. I'm gonna play. Yeah. What movie? That's fine. 
What movie is that from? I don't know. What bro. movie is that from? Do you know? You talking about <laughs> what you gonna call it? Mama Clay, I'm Clay. You talking about coming to America? <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I think I think that she wanted to be with him. And That's she, what I'm saying. He hurt her. That's what I'm she saying. That's what I'm saying about sure. this process being weird because you also opening up people's wounds and emotions and all of this other stuff. We watched another show. I think it was 90 Day Fiance. The one ex straight up asked the boy after he she, they filmed with his current situation. She walked away and he said, why you had to do this? Why not me? Oh, no, it was a girl. It was another girl, but it's the it same situation. Woman, but like, it's the same situation. Same type of thing where like this girl is, yeah. is clearly still in her feelings about whatever y'all yeah, had. So now we open it up. He wasn't even thinking about this bitch. He wasn't even thinking about her. But now we opening up these, these, these <laughs> lines of communication that shouldn't be open. We opening up these old wounds and old emotions. So this is just messy. It is messy in that reason. And I think what the, the the exercise is supposed to be and show that adults can have relationships and in relationships and move on amicably. And I really do believe that there's something to that. But I also, to Joe's point, Joe made a valid point because he was talking about exes. And I'm like, well, I don't see nothing wrong with that. But his he was like, if it's not like an ex-wife, or like somebody or who I had a, your mother, a, you got a or kid, the mother with them, of my you know child, what I mean? Or, or you got a men lives right. that makes sense to me. Yeah. But you calling my ex from uh, from six yeah. years ago so she could come tell you what she thought about for what? Yeah, yeah. I and I and that I agree with. And I, I thought that was just a weird episode. I thought it was weird when um what's his name? Not Dante. Frank. Frank shows up with Mumin, which I love that name. I love saying it. And, um, ooh, I want to call her Alicia. That might not even be that baby name. Probably. And baby, I'm sorry. I really, really am. Um, I think her name is Alicia, though. Showed up with Frank, um, Alicia and Mumin. So, did y'all expect Frank to be with a woman? I, I was did not even surprised. Did y'all? You were, I was. I wasn't even a little bit surprised. Did y'all expect Frank to be with a white woman? And I don't mean that in a bad way. I, I'm genuinely asking. Because I was... And, and not to say that he was Malcolm X. But I was saying... I was relatively... Of, oh. of the entire cast of men... Frank would be the one. I, 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 I would have gave it to Frank. I would have gave it to uh, Naeem. Naeem is from around the way. But he's so reserved. And you can tell he's a really smart... No. I mean, that sounded weird. No, no. no. Frank just... <laughs> I didn't. I don't know. That's not what I meant, y'all. Oh, please. Oh, please don't. That's not what I meant, y'all. I mean, what I'm saying is, he seems like... I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Yeah. So, <laughs> what I'm getting at, though, is that it was a very weird... Um, moment they felt like they were kind of like competing with me and alicia that that's the other thing that's dumb man. about these sit downs why is it multiple people there like that this is just I tv like. this that is just I tv drama like. like why are we doing this we 40 year old something uh, uh you know uh, no uh, adults we out here competing for time for talking time the one girl like well she just gonna cut me off and like oh uh, why not, are we uh, we about to get to to see it and feel. to see it like why but why are they at these meetings I it's agree. bad enough that they got to have this dumbass irrelevant meeting with somebody's <laughs> ex. But now they got to do it sit next to another person? Yeah. It's yeah. just like, come on, let's show these people some more respect in this. And that's kind of how I feel. I feel like, and, and that's where, oh, babe, you hit it right on the nose. That's where I think they went wrong. Because this should have been an opportunity where they made them choose only one person. Yeah. Like, but let's like, focus this. If you were going to do it, we got to focus this. Because is it me? Is it me or is it feeling like we're never going to get any couples out of this? No, because now we get to the point where people are being catty and yeah. they're trying to excommunicate people because they have a relationship or, or, or have built a serious bond with somebody else. So if somebody didn't choose me and they chose uh, 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 to see it, then whoever to see is dating, we got to get him out of here. If it's the men's day to go. Like, what are we doing here? Who set this up? This yeah. is not conducive for relationship building. Whenever somebody makes a strong connection, it's like, well, they're cut off to the rest of us, so they need to go. 
Isn't the point to get on the show and find somebody who you have a strong connection with? I thought that was the point. Can we pause? Pause. I'm on the own act, okay? Because I really want to know what this young lady's name is. And it's not Alicia. Alicia is my home girl. Alicia, call me girl. Because, you know, that's my girl. Alicia, I like, okay? That's Aisha. I'm like, who is Alicia? Oh, bitch. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know who she's talking about. I'm like, Alicia, I'm I'm ranking my Y'all, I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, because I didn't want them to give y'all a glare. Just put the glasses on, bro. Just put them on so you can see. I, I can't see. Give the people a name. I cannot see. But, babe, the other girl now. <laughs> I don't even know. Wait, wait. What I'm trying to tell y'all is, oh, um, y'all really got to step y'all cookers up. Oprah.com. Get a life, Oprah. Yeah, that's weird. My thing is. Weird? Yeah, just like that's not the name of the network. It's not the Oprah Network. Well, it is the Oprah Winfrey no, Network. No, no, it's own. <laughs> like they would have just when you watch the show, they say own. They, they say so say and so own. only on own. They don't say only on Oprah because that would be weird. But I'm trying to tell y'all that the girl's name is not on here. Her picture not on here either, and I do not like that. Y'all gotta update that. That website is only for the people that started that's the original stupid. cast members. That's stupid. So she's new. That's dumb, and it's bad. First of all, I no, that's dumb. Um, <laughs> I'm so cool. I'm so off topic right <laughs> now. <laughs> so okay, because we're taking up time. Twenty seven minutes. Okay. So now we get into, let's move on to Phil. And is it me? <laughs> is it me or is Phil just in here to politic with the hoes? Phil is not here for love. Uh, and it's not up for the baby. I just, I don't know that there's anything happening with him, you know? Uh, he, but he, everybody like him. Yeah, because he's, sometimes being a fly on the wall is the safe space. And you can get by, and then when people notice that you're flying the wall, you'll get thrown off the show. And I think we've seen people. Yeah, because he only got to run faster than the slowest. You don't like. exactly <laughs> like you don't have to outrun a bear. Right. You just got to outrun the motherfucker next. To you. Exactly. And I think that's what Phil is doing. He just biding his time, waiting that's in the water. True. That's, that's it. True. Well, he comes and to see it is um, in. Oh God, these names. Shiloh. Y'all think her mama named her that? Yes. You think Shiloh was the name? Okay. Mm -hmm. So Shiloh. She deserves it. She does look. She does give Shiloh. Like, let's be like clear. Like nothing. <laughs> she oh, joking, Joe. <laughs> She's so bland. Like, why is she on the show? She's another one. Like, just sitting on the wall watching paint dry. She. You know what? I thought she was going to give a little bit more because when she came in, she came. Um, I don't want to say sex forward. But she came intimacy forward. You know what I mean? And I think that... She just is boring she, to me. I She's giving boring. And she's giving I lead with that because I can't lead with nothing else. Yeah, she yeah. You know what I mean? So, she shows up on a date with Phil. Phil's ex. And um, to see it. Who we find out is a Taurus, which makes a lot of sense as to how she has navigated this process to me, because the controlling aspect of her, and I mean that respectfully to see, I don't mean that in a space where like you, you know, you're controlling. I mean, like you have been so good at making decisions that ego has now become your enemy. You know what I mean? So you have been in a space where you have done this right, this right, and this right. So you enter these moments and when people don't provide you with that, um, oh, I wouldn't be surprised if she has some fire, some uh, Leo in those charts. But when people don't provide her with that affirmation or affirm her status or do anything to make her feel like she's in first place, it makes her feel like last place. Even though it might be 30 people in the race. You yeah. know what I mean? She might be second or third, but it's like she feels depleted and defeated and it shows up on her face. And it was rough to watch. It was. And honestly, I, I agree with the fact that she's not ready to love. I think, and, I and, and and when we say not ready to love, I mean in this raggedy ass process. Yeah. I believe she's ready to love. And I believe she's going to meet somebody who provides her with the affection and attention that she needs. But I feel like this process 
was not good for her. Well, I feel like it's a couple of people that shouldn't have signed up for this, and, and but not, for other reasons, and not because <laughs> not because they are not necessarily not ready to love, but because of the fact that you're in a process where you're one of ten people of your same sex mm -hmm. dating ten other people of the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. You in these spaces and you have to navigate these very odd situations, these very uncomfortable situations. You're going on dates as a, as a thruple. You are, um, <laughs> so you staying in a house with the, the person who you think that you're in a, in a, in a tight relationship with. Yeah. They off in the corner talking to somebody else. You don't like that. So now it's causing friction between y'all. And it's just the, the oddness of the situation. We had this whole situation with Mumin and Walter. Walter's in the corner, you know, having an own, his own intimate moment with the other girl. And Mumin walks over yeah. and she's she mad that Walter ain't cozying up next to her. But He's you know already what? sitting next to somebody else. Like, so my thing is, are you are you are you wrong to feel weird about it, Mumin? No. But also you're in a house where the guy that you like is dating two or three other people in the house. So in the situation that you signed up for, you are wrong because this is not regular everyday life. If you walked up to him and he was just, you know, sitting at a piano in a bar somewhere with a, with a chick, I can understand it. But you signed up to be on a, on a show where there's 50 million people dating each other. Okay. So we're moving into the new episode. By the way, to see it gets kicked off. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Okay, so. <laughs> You're supposed okay. to say that first. Spoiler alert. <laughs> After she says it. Okay, so Sabrina and Walter drive up together, as does uh, Cornelius. All oh, these names. <laughs> Camille. <laughs> Cornelius, Camille, and Zadia. Yeah. I love that name. Um, so let's talk about the Sabrina and Walter situation with Mumi. So, I think that me and Joe had this conversation. I want to kind of bring it up again. Mumin made a valid point. Your energy shifted. This is why. His energy didn't shift. His energy was already directed towards another woman. What she said was, he made it, he made it like not now. Like. Yes, because I'm with another woman. This is the show that you signed up for. Like, this is, we're dating a thousand people I, and we're in a house together. Like, this is not the moment, the Moomin and Walter show. Like, this is the Ready for Love show. I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of felt where Moomin was coming from. But no, not, but yeah. that's what I mean by some people should, uh, are, should not have signed up for this because it's not that Moomin isn't ready to love. It's that you're not ready to be on a show where, where it's 10 people dating 10 other people. And you no, looking for your I person. Because some people no. need their person. Le like but, uh, uh, Camille. She needs her person. Camille should have never been on this show. But ever. I don't think Moomin comes... I, I, I disagree with that. I don't. I think Moomin is, uh, is absolutely 115% open to this process. I think at, of maybe only a third or maybe an eighth of this entire population of people that originally started this should have really been a part of this, right? And I think Mumin is one of them. I think that she's no. actually in a space where she can do this because no. her issue... Because if you was ready for this process, you would have never even walked over No, there. no, no. No, that's not true. You want, you want to smoke. You you knew it. Everybody in the house knows that they that they have a thing, no. right? No, no, Joe, no. And Why I was, walk over there, bro? Get me out. No. Because <laughs> he's going to get his ass wet. Let me tell you. I'm about to there. take my belt off. This is why I'm gonna say you don't that. Have a belt I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna You're say. not wearing a belt. Like, what are you? Let me tell you what I'm gonna say now. And this is why you're wrong. Because I'm not wrong. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> you're always wrong. I'm never wrong. I'm that's always a, that's never a, wrong. That's a, that's. It's literally like a one percent chance. <laughs> but you, but you about to get aired out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to hold it. So the reason why I think that you're, we might not be on the same page about this is because the same exact thing happened with Phil 
and uh, Dante when they were talking to Aisha. The same exact thing. But the difference is, is that Aisha's energy wasn't, she made it very clear. I'm open to both parties and I'm not going to shade you when I'm around her. That's what make you a fuck boy. What make you a fuck boy is that if you're open, if you're saying I'm open to this process, you would understand that I would be in a room with other people and, and vice versa, right? So I could be like, oh, hey, I could still show you love in a moment. No, let me tell you why that Why wouldn't different. I show you let love? Let me tell you, he, he walked over, grabbed her hand or said something to her and, and went a, a, to a different area. Mumin walked over and stood there. And she touched her. And so what you're calling is like, and so the other girl is getting offensive because she like, I'm sitting here and you rubbing his neck. No. So you came no, over here because you not, want to smoke. But the difference I'm is, not gonna stand there and love you up while you stand there. No, 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 it's, no. it's different if I tell it's you. It's not can, different. If, if I she say, did the same no, exact thing. I recognize the process. She made that very point. However, I feel like when you're in certain spaces, you're a little different. And that is weird. Yes, we're in this moment, and it's very all, It's going to be weird it's anytime be weird all three of us is hanging out together. And but I'm even, talking even like, Phil that's... said that. Phil said this month, he showed up with the silk on. He got the baby oil on his chest. All the stuff like that, right? But the reality is, is that the difference is... The difference, the difference wasn't the two people on the um, outside. The difference was Aisha. Aisha was like, listen, not I'm uh, for everybody's spirit, but I recognize that I have a connection with this person and I'm not going to shade them in front of you because I'm a real one. I'm not going to she shade them. She didn't have a them. chance to shade anybody because they left. The, but no, she did. He walked up. He made himself very clear. Mumin literally said, Mumin when I walked there. in the room, Mumin said, or she actually said, when I walked in the room, his energy shifted. And I could feel Why wouldn't it. And it? Why would we in a process? It shouldn't. But that's what I'm saying. If you're feeling why, mean, why would it? Because this is this is not a threesome. He's in a corner having an I intimate disagree. moment with somebody I else. Disagree. So this is not a situation where I'm inviting you. I don't his energy wasn't inviting her over to the corner while he's sitting next to somebody else. And it Why would it be? It wasn't inviting it wasn't inviting. But that's what I mean by it some wasn't. but that's what I mean by some people should not have just signed up for this show. Like I understand, like I said, in the grand scheme of things in a in a real world regular situation she would have all the cards and in, in, in all the juice. Like, yeah. I would be all for everything that she had to say. Yeah. I just couldn't all the way get with it because I don't even understand the moves that you made to, to, to go over there and, and, and for you to linger, period. Makes it, it made it uncomfortable for me and I'm watching. I'm at home on my couch. Now, let's be clear. I felt uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just think... But I think I felt uncomfortable because when she met with him at the pool... She told him, like, I th she said, my issue is, and she was very clear, was your lack of communication. That's a big deal. Because what I told Joe was, if he had communicated in that moment, which she shouldn't have walked off, let's be clear. However, if Walter communicates and says, this, to Joe's point, is a weird-ass process. And we're not speaking to that, right? We're not speaking to, I don't really... I don't know this how This is that not that every day. This is not like if we was day if I met you on the street, we wouldn't be in this situation. But if he speaks to that, right? Her energy shifts. Then it's like, you know what? I'm I'm a I'm and I But that's the that's the thing. I don't know that. I I don't know that her energy would have shifted. Because she was giving me like uh, it is what it, you know. It, you know how Jones do. It is what it is. Like you know what I mean. Like she was gonna hold on to this thing. How do Jones do? You know, like oh, I'm good. Da, da, da. It is what it. Is. You know what I mean. Like she was giving <laughs> me this. Like that's what she was giving me. Like this bratty girl vibe. Like like it doesn't. Like it didn't matter what he said. I I saw you. You and know maybe, what I mean. She was giving maybe me that. That was the moment. And I'm speaking from a space of optimism. Yeah, and, and that she was giving me a different. And, she was just giving me a different going. vibe of like. But I just don't think that's where she was going. With like that. she was giving me when when not on a way lesser level because yeah. we can't compare anybody to Camille. But when Camille, when the bull Camille caught the guy talking to somebody else because this is a dating show with a thousand other people, and he walked over and tried to talk to her and she was just like, 
it is what it is. Like I already seen you like over there talking to her, whoop de whoop de whoop. Like I'm kind of done for the moment. I'm done for the day. Like you know what I mean? She was giving me like those kind of vibes. You know what I mean? You remember when Camille did that shit? Yes. Crazy. But I wanna like Camille and I really wanna be down with the brown girl um for life. Because I got my own collective of brown girls and we do really are These brown girls. girls seem a little toxic. Okay. They seem very messy and mean and I just think at they big ages what are you doing? <laughs> that they should not be acting like that. Because I wanted to make sure everybody was picking up what I was doing. Yeah, to. they picked it up. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to make sure y'all was picking up what the fuck I was putting down. Okay? At your big ages. I don't understand. I just, I, I don't understand. Right. And I'm going to get there. I genuinely am. But let me tell you another difference. Even the way Frank was talking to, I do not know that young lady name, and I want to call her Alicia. Who? The light skin girl that we think is cute. Her name is not Alicia. It's it, like her, the way he talked to her, and literally made it very clear I'm into her and Mumi. And right now, that's all I'm focusing on. Yeah. That is what I think Mumi was expecting. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I do like that Frank kind of stepped up like that. And I thought it was kind of cool, like to see them in that manner. But I really want to get to yeah, the okay. dinner. What everybody. Dinner? They talk. Uncle Tommy comes in. Everybody stands up and claps. We, now, stop we must stop. We it stop. must be stopped. Like, we watch things with the with the captions on them. So we every, everything we watch, we watch with the closed caption because, you know, we need to know exactly what motherfuckers are saying. Yeah, for real. And it literally said, what is that? All cheer or some shit like that. <laughs> Like, what is this? A talk show? <laughs> like, they got cute cards. like, they got everybody <laughs> play. Uncle Tommy is here. Like, I don't get it. And it's like, why are we clapping for him? He don't even really be a part of this process. Why are we clapping for him? He's because the host. He's just the host. <laughs> like, why are we clapping for him every time we see him? That is it. That makes no sense. The, uh. And I don't even believe he that egotistical. I just don't. I, don't I can't either. I don't I cannot, believe he is Nothing either. about, I, I can't believe that he's that way. And it's just like, it's not giving. It's just not. But that's, that's the small part of it. The bigger part of it is one person is going home the next day. Okay. On this trip that they're on. And they sit down and they have this dinner. And I really want to get into this dinner because this dinner bothered me on so many levels. Oh, and, and, but I knew, I kind of felt some shit coming because... I just was nervous when the dinner started and nothing happened. And I think I just... What you mean? I could just... My eyes were I, I felt, like, uncomfortable. And I think it's because I could feel the the energy in the room was just a little weird. It was very weird. And that's primarily because uh, Cornelius is a prisoner of war. And he just... <laughs> and he's literally being held hostage. And everybody knows it but him. Everybody knows. Okay. And he's talking about, I'm starting to see red flags with, uh. He's starting to see. Why, y'all, before we even get there, what will ever convince this hoe to give him a necklace with that saying on it? I don't even believe this woman believe it in the things that's, that come out of her mouth. That's how manipulative I think she, she is. Would, she, would, she wanted to give him an engagement. Her, her meaning Camille. I think she's so manipulative that. She crazy. She's such a predator. And I don't mean predator like, you know, R. Kelly or Bill Cosby. I oh, mean... Slow down. We're not going to do that to Bill. Okay. <laughs> hey, all I'm saying is slow down. Slow down. Saying, People can have their opinions. I'm telling you to slow yeah. down. We don't okay. want... We don't want... I don't think that she's a predator like Bill or... or Stop Kelly. saying Bill Cosby's name. Say, talk about R. Put R. Kelly in there. Right. What I'm saying is, is that but I do think she's a like an emotional predator. Okay, does that make sense? She is crazy. Y'all gotta watch the crazy high skill video. Camille <laughs> is on there, bro. I think that I think that she is an emotional predator, and I think that he is enjoying being uh, lusted after. Absolutely, or... some dudes. Yes. You like that? You no, like that? Either. No, I don't either. I honestly yeah. think the only reason why <laughs> Joe really liked me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I really think you don't even know what I'm about to say. Yes, I do. What, what, yes, I do. What I'm about to say. I already know, and it's not true. No, I really think it's not. You true. don't even. He don't know what I'm about. I he do know what you about to say. Something. I do. Listen, <laughs> I really think that there was a time in my life where I was a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Where, you know, I was knucking and bucking and ready to fight, okay? I was really about that life. And I think that when you're younger and you're experiencing a lot of feelings, okay, you're doing a lot of things and experiencing a lot of feelings, you it gets misplaced. And I do think a large part of our foundation was built on the fact that I was nuts. <laughs> And I said it. And my therapist no. would be proud of me for speaking my truth. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that's the truth. I think they, I think it's a phase. I think that all men go through. And I think all people, all people, because women do the same thing. They be with men and they be like, oh, girl, he crazy. Me included. Because anybody who know me, I tell them all the time. I only recognize men who is stalking men. You don't, you're not sitting outside my window. If you're not blowing up my phone, we, you would not, how do you get through the mess? And I think it's something to it that we all like a little bit of, not crazy, but a little bit of so it's, assurance. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's just call it what it is. It's crazy. And I think that Cornelius is definitely in that Cornelius camp. is a, uh, uh, he is down. That's what it is. He, he's down. Cornelius is down for this because the real tea is that Cornelius is on the spectrum of love. And I think that he's on the love spectrum. You cannot get me to believe that a grown straight man, you will walk into their house with a chest naked picture. Yeah, that's weird. But this is why he deals with women like Camille. Because she has masculine energy. Maybe so. Ooh, child. I don't want to read nobody down like that. Sorry, Cornelius. <laughs> I didn't mean so. to do that, babe. I didn't mean to do that. But that's my, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. I feel like a lot of y'all are weird. And I feel like this whole season has been a bunch of motherfucking weirdos. This grown woman sat up in this man's face who do not claim her. She was on a ride with her girlfriend who said, oh, what's next? She's like, oh, we're going, we're not going to live in a house together. We're going to buy new houses. This woman going to say, well, one step at a time. But he whispered it. He whispered yeah, it though. He's not about Cause that he thing. ain't stupid. He didn't want that smoke. He was like, one step. Yeah, he did. And that's every time she do something, he, that's how he handles it. Handles it. And what is annoying to me about her is that she all she did was sit in the passenger side and, and pout. That's my black doing. ass. Pull it over. We'd have been on the bridge. Pull it. Pull this shit over. I'm not gonna be the only one in this relationship. Well, he's not in a relationship. But Camille doesn't mind being the only one in a relationship because she's reminded of it, and then she just comes back for more. That's a fact. But then Tommy going to ask him, "Are you are you ignoring any red flag? You think?" <laughs> but Tommy be slick with some of these questions, just like how he asked Camille, "What you mean? Uh, what you mean by that?" He knew she had been engaged. 27 a times. Your messy. He Your was, messy boots. Right. Your messy boots are showing. Okay? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, what you mean by that? You yeah, was engaged. Yeah, Bruh. you know. You know. It wasn't even good acting. No. But you know what, though? Tom, Uncle Tommy, I don't even believe that was you. That was overproduction. It probably was. I don't believe that was you. I don't even believe you would have said that. Yeah. You, but you know, some men really do be messy like that. Like the boy from uh, Married at First Sight. He is messy. Hmm. The guy who hosts the reunions. Oh, I hate him. He's messy as hell. And I want to like him, but like, he up there with Tiger Woods for me. Like, in the in the <laughs> racial draft, in the racial draft that Dave Chappelle be doing, yeah. we trading him. Definitely Tiger Woods. Swipe him out. First. I don't want nothing to do with him. But, <laughs> <laughs> for real, bring Pete Davidson over. I like him. <laughs> but, mm -mm, he got to go, whatever his name is. But what I'm trying to get at, going back to ready to love is that i find these moments to be weird and i think that her doing that is possessive and the fact that every other adult in the room sees that is very fascinating to yeah. me yeah yeah i think that it, it, this is just a pattern 
That's all. This is just a pattern and, and it's not going anywhere good. Let's get to the dinner that I was very much triggered by. Yeah. Number one, and this might be colorist of me to say, but I'm going to say it. I have much higher standards for brown girls. And by brown girls, I mean, ooh, I want to say something very controversial, but I mean brown skin women. Okay, and and this and and this sounds colorist, and I come from. If you know my mama, she passing. Okay, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like, but I do think that we are the glue. That's what I mean when I say I have high expectations. I mean that there might be moments where we're in rooms and in spaces with other women that might be going through colorist moments. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we are the great equalizers. And we have the ability to pull everybody together. And, and I just, that can be said for any brown skin person, right? Any person of, you know, melanin descent or whatever the case may be. But I, I, I'm saying that because I was very disappointed in how the dinner went. I think that Zadia and Camille are nasty girls. And I think that Nothing that they say or their actions are never justified. And I do think that they are aggressive, even though when, when uh, Aisha said it, everybody was like, uh -huh, don't go there, don't go there. Like, no, like we just because words have been associated with us or in us meaning black women, does it mean that we don't ex exude certain characteristics? You can still be aggressive. Like, you know what I mean? Just because, yes, it may have been used, uh, uh, you know, a little bit too much or way too much to describe us mm -hmm. does not mean that there aren't aggressive black women. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I thought that in this moment, it is very telling how if, mm, what kind of woman you are when you're in mixed company and you're talking to other women. I so I thought that um I thought that Aisha turned up more than she should have turned up. Like I just like it, it wasn't that I thought that Camille and uh Camille and Zadia I thought Zadia went a little too hard, but I thought that Aisha like made it more of a scene like she's standing up she like you know what i mean she called you know you get what okay. I mean? like i don't think that i think it would have been much less of a of a dramatic scene had aisha kept a little bit more of a lid on her emotions in that situation okay so i don't this is where i'm going to push back she was clearly being antagonized and she was in a space with people who were saying, the girl literally said, well, prior to that, the young woman said, she said, if by the logic of whatever process we're going through, Cornelius will be the one that we will put up, right? She said, girl, I beat your ass. I fuck y'all up if y'all do that. How is, well, you, that was, how is any, so you're trying to tell me. That was a lie. In that moment, if somebody says that to you, we just gonna pretend like I'm a grown. I didn't, I'm a so big I didn't, woman. So I didn't take that. Camille is always saying like these off the cuff wild no. things, and I didn't take that no. as Camille being serious that she wanted to fight somebody. So if a grown man, Joe, 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 I didn't take that. You're in a room with a grown man, and you say, "Well, I don't," and then you, and that grown man says to you, "I fuck y'all up." You trying to tell me, and and the way you turn up on me. You try to tell me. Turn up on you wouldn't. You wouldn't say. You wouldn't have the same energy. Are you kidding no, me? No. What I'm saying is, I didn't take. Camille says crazy shit to everybody all day. But life. that does not mean. First of all, what you cannot do is allow people to have this poor behavior and make excuses for it. It is twenty. No, I'm not making excuses. For Eight to eighty, blind, crippled, and crazy. If you say something disrespectful or out of line, you should. Absolutely be checked. I'm not and you cannot dictate so somebody else's response after you're disrespectful. Okay, I didn't disrespect anybody. So let's be clear about that. I didn't say you I didn't I'm just saying I did I'm not 
I'm, I'm one, I, I, one didn't what disrespect, is I one didn't disrespect anybody and I too made no excuses for anybody. I said that I thought that both Camille and Zadia went too hard. I said that. We can play the tape back. So that, that wasn't making an excuse for them. And I also, you, so, and you I, let, let me finish, okay, okay. let me finish because I also said that I thought Aisha turned up too much. So those, Which, I, I didn't make an, I didn't make an excuse for anybody. I think for I just so, said that I, I, agree I took that as I took, I'm saying that by Camille saying what Camille said, I didn't think that I never thought that Camille was actually going to fight anybody. I'm not making an excuse for Camille. I just, but that don't make it not. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. She's it made 42 it okay. years right. old. I'm saying that Camille was wrong. What you just said was, what you just said was, I just didn't think, oh, oh, she was going to beat nobody ass. I that, that does, that does absolve her no, of I'm, saying disrespectful things. You cannot, no, that, if we're That was my process. perception of it. I'm not absolving but anything. But my thing is, I was giving my honest, transparent, my honest, transparent, my honest, transparent perception of Camille is Camille is not about, she don't want that smoke. All too often do, and people have experienced this generationally. Think about how all of the uh, situations you've had with your parents. Think about all the situations you have had with other people, relationships, friendships, uh, men or women, right? Where you're in spaces and they will do something and or say something that is completely out of line while you are trying to say your piece. And then turn around and give you an excuse as to why they did it. That is a problem. If you're disrespectful, own the disrespect, period. There is no caveat. There is no, well, I don't think she really was going to do it. That doesn't, that doesn't negate that wasn't making, the disrespect. So let me, let's be clear. Let's be clear. Cause I think you're taking this in a completely different way. I'm not defending Camille. I was talking about my own perception of what Camille did and how I view Camille. I think Camille yeah, yeah, is a punk. Yeah. So me saying that. I don't, I, I don't want to, I just think that she just is over. She just is. So I personally think yes. that Camille is a punk. Yes. And I think that Camille would never really step to anybody. So me saying that I didn't take Camille, I didn't take Camille's words as she was really trying to buck is because but that's but, but let me, but I I'm but I'm it's only me. I'm this is Joe and Zar's YouTube. <laughs> I, I can only speak for me. But Who else I, am I speaking for? Speaking to. But let me let me speak I, because I'm speaking of my opinion and my perception of what I saw. So I'm not here to defend Camille or Zadia or or um or, or Aisha. I'm saying that I was in the middle of saying of what my perception of the argument was. Mm -hmm. My perception at no point my perception is my perception. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not trying to um absolve anybody of wrongdoing. I thought they was all wrong. Right? So for me to say I thought Aisha was wrong doesn't mean that Zadia wasn't wrong. For me to say that I thought Camille was wrong doesn't mean that Aisha wasn't wrong. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how we got on off on, on this tangent of like I'm Joe's trying to cake for Aisha and cake for Camille. I'm not doing any of that. I think that Aisha stated in her confessional that she had something brewing with Zadia previously. Right. So then this, so they then, had been in a so, moment where they had to talk about, deliberate about who they were going to uh, eliminate. And Zadia was disrespectful then. Right. And so Camille this, had said this something to what disrespectful I'm then. This, okay, so, and that's what, and, and that's what but, I think she, it, the anger is coming from. The anger is coming from right, but let me finish. where you're in a process and you feel like you can't speak to certain situations because somebody else got like, Big feelings about it, or whatever the case may be, and that kind of this speaks to my point. This speaks to my point that I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is, I said I thought that Aisha turned up too much, right? And it's because not she didn't turn up because she thought Camille was about to punch her in the face. This is my point. She turned up because she had some deep rooted shit that was going back weeks and back conversations ago against Zadia and whatever. This, she was tired of Zadia, so this is my point. Zadia was wrong. It was the tip of, of she was testing I she was the tip of the iceberg. She was testing her patience and she was turning up, but it wasn't warranted in what was happening in the moment. Oh, it was you think in the moment that's it what was I'm overdone. saying. That's what <laughs> I've been trying to say. That's what I've been so trying to say. So what I what I was trying you to You thought the moment was overdone. Was, I thought that I thought, I thought that Aisha even confirmed what I was saying by saying I had a, I had an issue with her from before, and I was just tired of her mouth. 
So I said, which I am stand by, I think Aisha overreacted because there was a backstory there. But let me say this. Can I say something? And you tell me what you think about this. I think that black women operate in spaces where we're so used to not being heard or not being supported or whatever the case may be in most spaces that we develop a certain amount of passive aggressiveness, okay? That shows up where we become, we might not say anything for whatever period of time and then one thing can trigger a larger thing. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. And I do think to your point, that may have been what happened. I and I agree. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But I'm to saying. Your point, but I'm saying that, that my whole point in all of this is we had to unpack it. But, but <laughs> right. But my whole point in all of this, and it stands correct to today, is two things can be true. Right. So I think you got. You hung know up I hate that line. because it's true, and I think you got hung up on trying to make them not be true. Me saying that Aisha overreacted never meant. That uh that Zadi was right and that Camille was right. It no. just it just meant all three of them was wrong. <laughs> like no, no, no. you know what I mean? I'm to me, to me, all three of them was wrong, and other people in the room also talked about it on the joint. Only I just men. Thought, and I just only men. And let's and that's something to say. That is something to say. Because every woman, every single woman outside of Zadia and Camille skate for Aisha. Every single one. Sabrina said, Sabrina literally said, they poke, they are mean girls. They poke, poke, poke. And Aisha was not going to let it go. No. Nobody should be justified. Everybody was wrong. That's no. my point. What that says is the environment that men operate in is much different from the environment that women operate in. So when moments like this happen, it looks as if this is overblown. It's out of this. It's out of that. But women operate in spaces where they are unable to say exactly how they feel. And that's with other women. That's with men. Okay. And we can tell because look at how the men reacted. Except for Dante. Because he literally said. The men and didn't, went the up men to, didn't say anything. I ain't literally said. This is too much drama. This is that's what I'm saying. At the table, everybody was just sitting there watching them. But no. And they confessional. I'm speaking to the confessional. Because that's where people gave their opinion. Where Zadia gave her, I mean, Sabrina gave her opinion and literally said they were poking, poking, poking. And she was there. We were not. They were poking, poking, poking. And Aisha was not going to let them have it in that moment. And then the other young lady, the pretty girl that we cannot remember her name. Yeah. Okay. And I think he's so cute. I think he's so cute, but I can't remember your name. She even said it as well. They are mean. They are nasty. A lot of what they do shows up as jealous. And she was, and they were, and she was going to let them have it in that moment. And and what we don't get, and this is a dynamic, the difference between men and women, and how uh, privilege is such a thing, even in black people, right? And black men and black women, where we are not able to show up in spaces and defend ourselves without it looking like I'm do overdoing it. Because to me, to me, as a grown woman. Sitting at a table with other grown women. If you're in a space where you think you can talk to me any old kind of way, yeah, I, I am. Like, I'm ten toes down, ho. We gonna yeah, go back I think and we, forth. We getting in a space where we, where no one. I, I don't. I didn't hear anybody say that Camille and Zadia was right. What I said was, the difference is, is that the women made so all the women outside of that situation. The Make women are in this situation. The men are not. When I mean, they sit down and they do these lounges, and just like the, the women's lounge that we saw, where they was going back at each other, and Aqua Tommy was sitting there telling people, yo, yeah. he hollering at people. The men are not a part of that. So they're not in the situation. That's my point. What I'm getting at is that from the outside looking in, a lot of this does look like drama, right? But the reality is, is that when women show up in a space where they are willing to draw lines in the sand about how they will be talked to or how they will be treated or how they will be respected in moments, it comes off differently than when men do it. I'm not debating that. That is a, that is a, that is a subject that you wanted to raise and, and, I, and I'm with that, but that's not what I was giving my opinion on. My opinion was strictly based on what I saw on the TV 
And what I knew, again, not being, I'm not in a situation like everybody else ain't in like, a situation, I'm not right? In a situation, so right. I'm giving my opinion strictly on based on what I saw happen in at the table yeah. on the meeting. In that moment, I wasn't thinking about what I wasn't playing back in my head. Whatever Zadia said to Aisha in the past, or whatever mm -hmm. Camille said to her in the past, or whatever type of slick situation they had in the past. So I'm I'm commenting on what I saw in that scene. That's all I'm commenting on. And so when I say I understand there could be a deeper situation or like a deeper a thing, scope. I understand that. But when I comment made the comment that I thought she overreacted in that moment, I thought that she could have handled because I've seen it happen before. I've seen somebody say something that I that I found disrespectful and then not and I and it, and it I, not, I will beat your ass ain't no, disrespectful. I that's that's not what I'm saying. I've seen somebody say something disrespectful and it be handled in a way where we are not on Love and Hip Hop and we are not standing up and somebody feel like they about to get a drink thrown at them or whatever. That's all I'm saying. Like I say, and I stand by it, I thought all three of them was wrong. That's my opinion. You can disagree. You can say, well, I don't think Aisha was wrong. That's your opinion. My opinion is I thought, I, I thought, I thought all three of them handled it wrong. But that's why, that's, that's like, why, was it Dante? Who said like when you oh he said that to Zadia when you're in moments like this where you feel like you're escalating certain things you somebody has to be the person that disengages yeah and there is something to that you know what I mean but I'm just getting at and I don't want you to think that this was this is just supposed to be a thing where how men and women see things are very differently because you saw it in a Shiloh right. I saw it in a bigger picture. Yeah. I saw it from a space of watching the conversations from week to week escalate. You saw it as just this dinner. Yes. And in this dinner, this is how I felt about it, right? But what I'm getting at is that as I'm watching the progression of things increase, I can see how you get to a space where you feel like you're one, being bullied for lack of a better word. And that's word, valid. I was never any, pushing back on it. At, right. And I'm not saying... What I'm getting at is that that's why I'm like, how could you read? Because we're looking at the situation two different ways because you're looking at it from just your opinion on this one episode. I'm looking at it in a vacuum. This conversation, vacuum, this incident right, in a vacuum. Where I'm like, if we're talking about the full scope of what is going on, this is an issue. And one, we need to first deal with how we speak with one another because at 40 some odd years old, can, at 40 some odd years old, you know telling another grown ass woman, I fucked y'all up is a problem. Which I said she was wrong. And period. And, and we can't police Alicia. I, I want to call Alicia so bad. Her name is we can't Alicia. police Aisha and negate the fact that she had been them as a whole. High key, she's caving for all the other light skinned women in the crew. You know what I mean? Not that she's light skinned because she's a brown. But but but, but my but my other thing is that's that that my other thing is within this argument that is completely unrelated and tied to any one person. This has been my gripe on the show since we watched the show. This goes back beyond the season. Uh -huh. This is why I understood a little bit of what Zadia was saying is that if we meet and make a connection early. Why are we kicking people off because they made a connection with somebody else, right? That now that again, right? That has nothing. And she wasn't we, wrong, but that's what I meant. That's what I meant by like I'm not. This was this was my feeling before the season started. So this isn't tied to Aisha or Zadia or Camille, and right? That makes so sense. so so I didn't want it to be a conversation about caper for anybody because this is just my issue. This is my personal issue with the show. Yes. This is why I thought that. This is partly why I, I thought that Aisha overreacted because I thought that Zadia had a valid point and didn't say it disrespectfully. Like I thought she said, like the, because she because I, I made that point. Her hater. And she, she said she's good she said it was haters. She is. She, she is for wrapping it up. Which was her which was sense. her wrongdoing in it, right? I, like I said, I thought all three of them had played a part, and I thought that that was her wrongdoing in it, like throwing a little. Say what you said because say you can say what you said. And it and it stand alone as being your opinion, Zadia, right? Which right. is fine because that's been my opinion of the show. Like, why we whenever we feel like a couple is gravitating yeah. to each other, we're like they gotta go. That is your I don't. To me, 
Cause when Camille said something funny, she said this is called ready to love, not not um ready to be confused. This, right? So that part Which made that, sense. That part made sense to me, right? Because I've been saying that before this episode, before this season started, I've seen this in previous seasons, right? So I understood that where Zadia was wrong was she doing a little personal shot of like you saying a little haterish. That's what triggered Aisha because she said slight snarky shit to her in the past. I get all of that, but I'm just, like I say, I'm spitballing it about what I saw in the moment and I'm just judging it on the moment. Okay, I'm not I'm not taking all this other stuff into account because that really wasn't the prompt. I have a question. So, because I think the argument could be made and this, and this is where I think Aisha started the conversation from. I think it's very clear to everybody in the room, but Camille, that Cornelius wanted to fully engulf himself in this process. But once she started imprinting and then all the drama happened, and then now you're talking to me about how I'm dealing with other people, and then you're like, you better not hug her, or you better not do this, or you better not do that, or even when his ex left, she was leaving out, she's gonna say, how long is she gonna stay here? All this stuff like that. After Everybody else is noticing that he might want to engage with other women, but the environment that you make makes it hard for us to even address yes that. so i think that that was the conversation that aisha was bringing up she yep. so, so 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 to speak to that again two things can be true right i hate that one. because it's true and i think once you accept it you will if these conversations with in life will just get easier no. And I have much less arguments with people in the world now because I just live by that. Okay. Um, two things can be true. So two <laughs> things can be true um, in that Aisha has a point in, in this situation strictly related to Camille and the dynamic that she creates around the group. Yes. Referencing um, Cornelius, right? There's also the other thing that is true is what Zadia's point of some of y'all, and I said this too, cause, cause I don't think that this is just only applies to Aisha. I think we are in a situation now where when the women, and I said this during the show while we was watching it, I said it to her. I said, now we get in a place where it feels like the women are picking people to kick off that they feel like didn't choose them and chose somebody else, right? To, to Zadie's point of, so let's punish the people who found love, right? So two things could be true. There are two, there are two, there are, there are two very, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. There are two very yeah. flawed situations in this, in this, in this conversation. Yeah. And, and to me, they are both valid. Zadia has a valid point and so does Aisha. When it pertains to Camille, it's not a, it's not a larger thing. I think the larger thing to Zadia's point is this is an issue with the show and this is, and, and I see it rearing its ugly head on this season because there are personal vendettas amongst the women that is starting to play out when they are when it's time to kick off some guys i think you're right i usually am i said this when the no, video started not. and he i'm proving i prove it time after time, time the after. problem joe is not usually right I'm joe usually is usually right. loud I, no i'm not i'm but usually right, right but... she's still loud when in it now that is not true. It is true. It's I'm not, much more. Why would you lie to these the people? The dynamic has changed. She was just yelling at me earlier today for Dude, no reason. I was yelling at you. Yes, and I'm like, when did I? I literally you had to tell her. When did I? You don't you need to talk to me like this. Let me tell y'all the patience that I, I have. Him? The patience that I have had to exercise. I mean, you? It, yes. She's I, not I, on a I've been flexing you muscles. Not on, on. That I didn't even know I had. So they leave us with. Us trying to exercise, they going through this whole thing where they got to pick, you know, who's going to be in the bottom. It's very obvious. It's probably going to be Wall. No, it's uh Naeem because he's quiet and reserved and a nice guy. He, and he and just he, doesn't have a connection really with anybody. That's just the truth of the matter. But some people don't play the field. Some people and are those not people get kicked like, off. That's the flaw. To and those they get kicked off. Get, and that is the flaw. I don't understand. How would they fix this? But this is what I was saying. Like there's there's multiple there's multiple issues, and I think that that's one big one. It, yeah, it's no way in the world he should be able to. Is it? They should have to save one person every week. 
Like, they should have to go into the week saying this person is off limits. We can talk about everybody else. Yeah, but then everybody will be trying to save their person. Like, it's just the... the they got to rethink this whole good. thing. Yeah, they got to rethink yeah. the whole thing. Because I, I because I also think that the situation, the way that this system is set up, is not conducive to pushing couples toward each other. Because if you it's do, not. if you do have a, a a serious and genuine connection, you are low key always trying to downplay it so you don't get kicked off. That's so true. Because why would you sit in the meeting and be like, "Well, he told me I was the man." Yeah, yeah. It, it, also, we should never speak like that. Well, but that's another thing. They too old to be talking like that, and they do it every in week. In their big age. Every week. And I don't want to say old, but I want to say your age is big. <laughs> every week. You don't got a little age. You got a big age. Every week. Okay. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's very clear that it's Naeem and Cornelius, and my girl uh, Camille can barely get through telling Cornelius that. I don't think he's going home now. Who? Cornelius. I think Naeem is going home. I think Naeem is going home too. Because I think people feel for Cornelius. I think people feel for Cornelius. And they really do want to believe that him and Camille have a romance. And I don't think they want to believe that. You don't think that? I think they just feel for him because he's attached to Camille. And by attached, you mean what Camille said? In hostage, held hostage. Okay, that's. I wanted to be clear. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that. I think that you're absolutely right about that. But I do. Like they blame Camille. They don't blame. I don't. I feel they blame Camille. They don't blame Cornelius. So I don't. Think and, that and, and that's the only thing. And they don't like Camille. That's the only thing I'll backpedal on because you are absolutely the bleep right. I don't like that it's more of a Camille issue than it is a Cornelius. Cornelius issue when in fact he a grown ass man. If he didn't want to be in a situation, he just wouldn't be in a situation. Yeah, true. And I think I that also think Camille, he don't want the drama. I think but I think that Camille I mean, I think that Cornelius definitely um enables a lot of yes, Camille's behavior. Great. And I think that it is overlooked because some of the girls have a personal issue with Camille. They don't like her. They think she's a mean girl, whatever it is. And so I think that that's another that's another she, dynamic she, that's playing she, out. I think she's just, uh, I mean, and I'm saying that one alpha female to another, right? I don't think that you're mean. Female, so. <laughs> <For> <laughs> <me>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not you or Yeah, her. okay, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, from one alpha female to another, I don't think I'm out. I think I don't even think I'm an alpha female, but I think that I am uh, my own person. And when I see women like that, I don't think of it as. I do think it's a lot of this. You know what I mean? Like a lot of mouth, a lot of extraness. And I, I think see. that uh, I, I would see. divert my attention from that. The reason why I call her obnoxious and not mean is because. I, I think that she is just over the top. And that can rub people the wrong way. Yes, for and I, sure. And I think that... Um, I just think she's over the top. Yeah, I think that the women have an interesting dynamic going on. And, with that, that, and that, it's so that, fascinating to see the men be able to... It's not fascinating to me at all. This why is, it makes sense to you? Yeah, it's this kind of the story of life. Of, you know what I mean? I, and that's what can be a whole other deep conversation for another But day. you know what they say... I think that this, or oh, you, this is a deep conversation. I'm about to do, I think I'm about to do what you just said. That's a whole other conversation. We're gonna, we and, gonna and then we got handcuff you. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, uh, clip hang yo. I do think you're absolutely right. But there was a conversation that somebody said, and this was a man, and he said, women come off looking more uh, messy and catty in their group. Because they are more apt to be communicative about issues than men are. Which is with which each is other. True. Not with each with, other. Yeah, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? And like, especially when it comes to situations like this. Because I do think, think of it, think back to the previous episode when the men had to kick a woman off, right? Mm. And it was Tasia and Sabrina. And 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 they didn't want to kick off, even though everybody put Camille in the bottom. What did uh, Walt say? Is that his name? Walt. 
Walt, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> what did Walt say? Walt said, oh no, we can't, she off limits because Courtney, that's Cornelia is doing whatever the case may be. But what did everybody else do? Sabrina, 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 Sabrina. Just completely threw his way. But we're not going to talk about why y'all did that. Why? Because men don't do that, right? Because it's some stuff that, listen, when you get married, you realize some stuff don't need to be said. You live to fight another day. That's an no, attribute. No. That's a skill. I, <laughs> I think that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, some but that, stuff. I don't think, I don't think. We don't need to air, like, some of this stuff, we don't need to air out. Like, you know what I mean? Somebody's feelings going to get hurt when somebody get kicked off every week. Somebody, somebody's, somebody no, is not going to agree. I think the issue is, is that women look more toxic. And y'all must stand and tell us what y'all think. Women look more toxic because we are more apt to say how we feel. And when I mean, and, and that's to not, each you don't other, always need to, to each what other. does Shannon say? My grandma said, you don't, you don't need to tell me everything that's on your mind. Like you don't need to always say something that you're thinking. Sometimes you need to reserve your thoughts. And I think that's part of the problem. I, I, Zadia giving her opinion on, on Aisha and Aisha is tired of hearing her fucking opinion. Or, that's part of the issue. Or is that communication? No, it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be said. I don't need to. If I'm telling you how I feel about something, Zadia, I don't need you to communicate that you just don't like what I'm saying. But that's Zadia's like, opinion. Yeah, but you but it's not needed. That's the says your who? appointment. Says who? Says who people who are trying great, to keep the peace. Who is the great? Says people who don't want to argue. Who is the great? You're communicating to keep the peace. Where other people are communicating to communicate. No, Zadia is communicating to be messy because she no, doesn't like somebody. No, you're That's what I'm saying. You don't. You do not. You do not need to always speak what's but on what your I'm, mind. And I'm, the older you get, the more you I'm realize that. I'm speaking to the bigger picture. We're speaking about the difference in genders. And I'm speaking But I'm not speaking about the difference in genders. And I said no 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 no. I'm saying that when I said what I said about the situation, I made a point to say that it was specifically about the people involved in the situation, right? And so I'm saying that that's I said it could be a whole nother conversation yes. about a larger thing yes. that I that I am not speaking to. Yeah. Because I'm saying to say what I see, and I think that there and this is this is a, a thing of However, you want to attribute it to whatever sex, you don't need to say what to, to me. You don't need to say what's all on your mind. I think I, I think that's a part of the problem in a women's group when they get together. Everybody's saying shit that they don't need to. You don't need to say that to her like that. You know what I'm saying? Even if you think it like that, especially when nobody asked you. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to say everything that's on your mind. That's just a mature thing. Now, now first of all, I want to be clear. I grew up in a Muslim household. We think five times before we speak. Okay, so yes. I do think there's something to what you're saying, right? Because you're saying communicate effectively, not to be combative. Yeah. Communicate. And also, not don't to don't 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 communicate just to have diarrhea of the mouth. Like yeah. like the part, let me tell you something. This is the personal thing. Before we get off of here, I uh I was raised in a house very much like her, where our feelings were very much encouraged. To the yeah. point where it became a detriment to me. I was talking too much, saying too many of my thoughts in situations that I should pr probably have never. I'd probably have saved my. I'd probably have added years to my life. If, if and that's what I was saying, and I wasn't a shot at her. It was saying that I've now learned. I exercised muscles in a marriage, and 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 just in 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 learning and growing and going through therapy. Yeah. But I didn't know that I had. I I I've learned how to hold my tongue. More so now than ever in my life. And I'm saying that it is a positive thing. It's not a negative thing. As not, we were saying it joke, jokingly. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying that it has done wonders for my relationship that and my part. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so it wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, because she was making faces and all. It was, this is a real, this is my truth. No, I because Joe got, Joe, the old Joe said a lot more of his thoughts. <laughs> But well, yes. see, this this is my point. But so that's the we were on the tape when she was rolling her eyes when I said this, y'all. You know what? And calling me a liar and did it up. Cause yeah. see what I but see what I mean? No, don't hug me no, now. Cause no, you was, no, no. So I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, right, babe. I'm right. saying this to say that I personally know yeah. the uh the process of exercising um tech, the process of exercising your filter and exercising discipline in yeah. what you say and when you say it. Everybody doesn't need to know 
every waking thought that pops into your head. But especially when, especially, especially at times when you're really not ready to deliver it. I've also learned. Woo! I've also learned. I've also learned the art of 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 speaking my feelings when I'm ready to speak them. Because if I say them when I'm not ready to say them, I, they can they come can off. Be they can cut right. And so I'm also learning that in, in, in my marriage and stuff like that. I'm learning how to talk. Talk when I'm ready to talk. Not when I'm, you know, not when I'm in a space where I'm emotionally heightened and things like that. And so that's what I'm speaking to when I say communicate is fine, but you don't need diarrhea of the mouth. I used to be that person. You don't need to be that person. Mm -hmm. You can say things in, in a tactful way when you need to say it. And when you don't, shut your fucking mouth. Let me tell you something. Let me shut my motherfucking mouth because Joe said so. Okay, we want y'all make sure y'all bust down. All right, let us know how you felt about this one. I think that that was a perfect way to end. We done. Ooh, I'm gonna see you later. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> and we see you, mother jumpers, later. Okay, bye.